lovely day in Houston, folks. There's a live look over Centennial Gardens over at Herman Park, one of my favorite spots in the city, by the way. So uh, welcome back to the show. Glad you're with us. When it comes to eating a healthy diet, it seems like there are so many different kinds of philosophies. So what kind of diet might be best for you? And whether you're trying to eat low carb, gluten free or paleo, there are a few things you should know and some precautions you should take before diving in. And our friend, registered dietitian, Mary Ellen Phelps is here with us and also a friend of the show. So welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. And with Milk and Honey Nutrition. So you definitely need to check out her website and Instagram. And today, while we're breaking down these popular diets, you don't really like to use the word diet, right? Right. I like to think diet kind of has this negative tone to it. And so I like to think of it as a lifestyle or a way that we eat because I don't, I don't want anybody to feel restricted or like they have to adhere to a certain profile or something. Right. Okay. So you've sort of broken it down into categories, Mary Ellen. Let's talk about gluten-free because for a lot of people, you know, oh, I'm gluten-free, like the fake gluten-free. But so, for some people, <laughs> they really need to they be. They really need to be because of celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disorder. Exactly. And so my husband actually has celiac disease. So this is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and so gluten-free diet was originally intended for people with celiac disease or what's called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. The people who get stomach upset or maybe skin irritation or something like that, uh, but it's not necessarily an autoimmune condition. And so that means changing out the types of breads you eat um, because we're limiting or eliminating uh, wheat, rye, barley, and most oats. You have to buy wow. specific gluten-free oats. And is this like a blood test or how would we know? There is, it's a simple blood test. You can have your doctor order if you suspect. A lot of times if I'm working with clients and they have like unexplained stomach upset, unexplained just fatigue or lethargic or anything like that, I'll just say, let's just go to your doctor and have them run that test. Kind of get a quick, panel. Yeah, yeah. just to see. Okay, so what's this example here? So these are, we've got some common uh, gluten-free and grain-free baking flours. So this is a blend of brown rice and potato flour. Okay. Uh, one of the key things with gluten-free is to keep in mind that gluten-free food can still be very unhealthy um, if it's made with a lot of refined flour totally. and refined sugar. So we still want to use whole grain flours or grain-free like we have here with coconut flour and almond flour. Uh, and then this is a low sugar uh, chocolate chip cookie dough bites that um, they're kind of like an edible cookie dough that I use gluten-free oats and everyone's favorite ingredient. Garbanzo beans? <laughs> yes, they're delicious. There's a little bit of maple syrup in there to sweeten them up, some cinnamon. They're a house favorite for sure. So you could bake these. This is delicious. You could bake it, yes. This is so good. Or you could just eat it raw. This is amazing. They're great. You can refrigerate them if you want to. You don't have to. That's the beauty of not having let eggs me, or anything. Let me there. ask you, Mary, because these flours, I mean, if you're using a, a blend yeah. of like potato flour or whatever, this doesn't exactly translate into... Weight loss, right? Well, or like you can't use, you can't just substitute this for regular flour, right? Because once I tried to make a friend gluten-free cookies, I actually did it here live on the show and it was a disaster. So uh, usually if people are just starting out, I recommend buying a pre-made blend and that's what that is right there. There's a lot of different brands at the grocery store you can find. Some of them work well. They, they'll even like mark in themselves as one-to-one -one substitutes. But most of them, if you just go pick up brown rice flour or potato flour. You're right. It's not It's, it's not, not a direct translation. Okay. Direct I use a lot of almond flour. Okay, what is this one? So next we're going to move on to the keto diet. Okay. This is a huge trend right now. It and is. I can't tell you how many messages online and clients I get that ask me if they, I think keto would be right for what them. What is it? So basically the keto diet is a high fat, low carb diet. Um, it was originally developed, intended in the 1920s for epileptics that weren't responding, kids with epilepsy that weren't responding to treatment with other medicines or whatever else they were trying. So this physician came up with it and realized that people who ate basically low to zero carbohydrates um, had less seizures. But lately, in the last few years, we've seen this uptick of people using it for weight loss because it's pretty undeniable. People lose weight when they start the keto diet. On a diet. high but, fat diet? But, <laughs> but the key thing is, first, initially, a lot of it is water weight, so you have to be careful there. Um, and then long term, we, you definitely, if you're going to pursue it long term, need to work with a registered dietitian or another nutrition professional. But the key thing to keep in mind is we don't have long term data on the safety of doing this um, if it's not medically necessary. And we also don't uh, know the impact of minimal amounts of fiber because you really have to limit the amount. Yeah, I'm really so skeptical. I am one. too because it also, it's tricking your brain into thinking it's starving, right? Right. So the theory when they started using this with people who are having seizures is that they noticed when blood sugars dropped low that they didn't have as many seizures. And so they figured out that all they had to do was eliminate carbohydrate from the diet to lessen those seizures. And so um, if you have any sort of history of diabetes or hypoglycemia, I really caution people against the keto diet because you never know what that, how that could impact your blood sugars. Okay. okay. Let's move along yeah. to the next uh, diet. 
Yeah, and so f next we're gonna talk about paleo. And so paleo is one that I think can potentially get a bad rap, but it actually does have a lot of positive merits to it, as long as we don't become too restrictive. Um, and so paleo is essentially um, a diet focusing on lean protein, nuts, seeds, fruits and vegetables, quality real food. Um, the things that are off limits are things like dairy, okay, uh, any sort of grain like oats or flours or even like the ri brown rice flour we were talking about down there and legumes. Okay. And then any sort of refined sugar process. And this do. is also called like the caveman diet, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. It started off as this movement of people who wanted to get back to the way um, cavemen ate before farming, before um, both land farming and animal farming, and just kind of getting back to the way cavemen used to eat, essentially. And so the bulk of your diet then is coming from protein, or is it... A, a it mix. still can be a very well balanced diet because um, we're incorporating fruits and vegetables. You can use a lot of grain free flours like the almond flour and the coconut flour. Um, in our dietitian space, I actually use it a lot with people suffering from autoimmune conditions like MS or RA. It can reduce inflammation quite a lot. All right, let's move on, by the way, to dessert. I love all the colors of this fresh produce, by the yes. way. But what are you uh, making with the with the OJ and the coconut cream? So one of the key things you can do on the paleo diet is you can, because you can't have dairy, right. is you can sub coconut cream. And so I, we have a little orange creamsicle recipe, perfect for summer, because it's crazy hot outside right yes. now. <laughs> um, but the first step is we're going to take um, two cups of orange juice, 100% orange juice. Okay. And this is from concentrate or fresh? No, fresh orange juice, Okay. 100%, no added sugar. Always be careful to look for that. And then we've got a quarter cup of ground up chia seeds, a little trick for the moms in the audience. If you can use regular chia seeds, but my girls won't eat it when they see the little specks in it. Okay. So I do ground up. And you can grind it up in a blender too. Uh-huh. And then a quarter cup of hemp seeds. And ah. what we're getting with the chia seeds and the hemp seeds is added protein to balance out the carbohydrate in the orange juice. And then we do the whole can of coconut milk, or okay. coconut cream, excuse me, just to give it that creaminess. So excited. That's and then cool. we blend it all up and... We have some ready right here. Uh, Magic of TV. Popsicles for you to try. Awesome. All so right. it's like, is it, cre it's creamy like a dreamsicle, right? Yeah. Hmm. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Oh. oh my gosh. What a great idea. Mary, you, you have so many great ideas, by the way. We should remind people that your blog, if you guys out there, you want more recipe ideas, you can always check out milkandhoneynutrition.com. And you can find Mary Ellen on Instagram as well. That's where I find Thanks her. Always great stuff. Thanks Thank so much, guys. Mary Ellen.